webinars are made possible thanks to generous donor support. If you'd like to contribute, please visit our website, autism.org. Before we get started, I'll introduce our speaker. Occupational therapist Chelsea Whitaker is the founder of Taking the Lead, a nonprofit organization which helps children and adults with disabilities gain independence, build self confidence, and learn to function at their highest levels. This is done through the use of therapeutic horseback riding and service dogs. Hello and welcome to our webinar, My 1000 Pound Therapist how occupational therapy on horseback increases confidence, communication, and motivation. I can't wait to share with you how occupational therapy on horseback or hippotherapy can help your child reach their goals and exceed through this super exciting and fun outdoor activity. Does your child lack confidence? Does your child have a hard time getting motivated to complete tasks? Does your daughter avoid trying new things? Is it hard for your son to sit and focus at school? Does your child have a hard time keeping up with their peers on the playground or in sports? Or do you notice that your child has poor posture? Does your child have difficulty following instructions? Do you have a hard time getting your kid off their phone or computer to go play outside? If you answered yes to any of those questions, you're in the right place. Hippotherapy might be exactly what your child needs. And that's exactly what we specialize in at Taking the Lead, Inc. at Timberbrook Farm, located in Freeland, Maryland. So what is hippotherapy? It's a treatment strategy used by a licensed occupational, physical, or speech therapist to achieve an individual's goals through riding horseback. It uses the horse's movement to engage and motivate a child to achieve their therapy goals that benefit them at home, at school, and at play. So who can benefit from hippotherapy? Well, we've treated people of all ages at Timberbrook Farm, from two years old to 85 years old. And we help people with all levels of disabilities. Taking the Lean is a nonprofit organization where we help individuals with disabilities be independent and successful using trained animals to help us with that. When you come onto this property, there is a peace and a calmness that you feel. I can't explain it, um, but it's it's just very calming. It's been uh, tremendous for Sophie. She feels uh, loved and special and like she's really bonding with the horses. The people here uh, have an understanding of what their clients need. The horses provide so much motivation for our clients. They, they want to ride the horse. That's something even their peers can't do and that's something they get to do for the first time. So being able to get on a horse and control a thousand pound animal just gains so much self-confidence for our riders. Good job! We're using the horse like a piece of exercise equipment where, you know, the people are stretching, they're balancing. Horses have a sixth sense. It's hard to explain, but they know that who's on their back and they take care of them. Hippotherapy is occupational therapy, physical therapy, or speech therapy um, on the horse. So we have clients 
sit on the horse and feel the movement while they're meeting their therapy goals, whether that's to speak better, balance, gain control of the muscle, or follow directions. She has an, an, an intuitive ability to um, connect with the animals, connect with the, the people involved in the program. Since she was a little kid, she's had this thing with animals. Uh, started out with uh, dogs and goats and uh, rabbits and any kind of animal. She's had this ability to train animals. And then when she, she came here to Timberbrook Farm, um, we were thrilled to, to participate in this program as well. Chelsea is an amazing animal trainer. She trains dogs, she trains horses. I have been training animals my whole life. I personally love the relationship between the human animal interaction. And I love that we can rescue horses and other animals and help them with other clients and getting their success. The positive outcomes are many. Karen's self-esteem, self-confidence, the way she carries herself, the riding is good for her physically and emotionally. I did reach my goal today, but not touching a saddle. My grandpa had his rules that you can't touch the saddle, only the rings. Sam has um, improved his stance, his muscle tone, his, his core strength, he, his posture has improved, he holds himself better, he's, he stands better, he sits better, all those things that are important when attending to learning and, and other things of that nature. To get them out of an office setting and into an environment, especially when you can interact with an animal, it's just lovely. We've seen good results, specifically some of the uh, STEM behaviors or repetitive behaviors that are inherent to autism spectrum disorder. We have seen certainly a decrease while he's here uh, because he's concentrating on the animal and what he has to do. I've definitely seen not only um, physical growth, but they have definitely both improved in their confidence. The people that ride are normally very hyperactive. They're not focused, but once they get on that horse, they have a drive. They have a confidence that you don't see them when they're not on the horse. I have had one client with autism speak for the first time because we were doing a game on the horse. After his third or fourth lesson, he was trying to like tell the horse to walk and his caregiver had never heard him try to say a word before, and it was a very emotional moment. I see the benefits that we are able to give these people. The volunteers are so amazing because they also feel really good about what they're doing. Seeing what they do and how much impact they make on other people's lives is one of the reasons why I take part of my time to work here. We have a beautiful piece of property. It's 80 acres. Nature is amazing. It's got a very healing and calming effect on people. For the general public, we have a lot of fun, different yoga sessions. We have dog yoga through the summer. We have an art class that we're doing. Um, we also do hiking and we have great community, community leaders that come and volunteer. So we have people come out with their dogs and they walk to the back pasture and it's just, it's beautiful. And we have someone give instructions. When we use the animals, it just elicits so much more motivation. I have clients who don't sleep the night before knowing they get to do therapy on the horse. I think our goal is for taking the lead is to really serve people with disabilities um, as they age, to be independent at school and at home, and finally in the workplace. What are the benefits of hippotherapy? There are so many, but we're gonna talk about six of them today. Confidence, balance, strength and mobility, focus, communication, and motivation. So is it true that hypotherapy can improve one's confidence? Yes, so the whole idea behind hypotherapy is that your loved one controls a thousand pound animal. And anytime that happens, of course you feel on top of the world. Several times when we've had riders steer their horse and complete their goals, even though their occupational therapy goals as far as focus, balance, communication, and strength, 
they're also riding goals. So they're getting the horses to go through different obstacles and do different movements. And they're also doing different positions on the horse as far, far as like tall kneeling or moving around the world on the horse. And as soon as they're like accomplished something new on the horse, we have our riders go, I did it. I can do it. And as a therapist, it's just the best feeling in the world. And the horse is just provides so much like just motivation to participate. And then of course we're successful and everyone on the team is just confident in the rider's abilities. And we see people improve week after week. Great. It's very cool to see each time the patient gets more and more confident as they ride their horse and yeah, just moving a thousand pound animal. How can you not feel more confident? Absolutely. Anytime you're walking on a horse, your hips and lower body have to keep up with the horse's movement. As you can see, Asani's walking up here on George. She's weight shifting with him as he's walking forward. So in a 30-minute lesson, our riders actually weight shift 30,000 times, which means all their muscles are counteracting the, the movement of the horse, and they have to stay in the middle and on top of George as he moves. So you'll hear us during a lesson refer and ask the rider, are you in the middle? Are you balanced? And not only do they have to know where their body is in space and have that, we call it proprioception, our therapy term, but they also have to just maintain their core, their lower extremity, muscle strength, and then keep that balance. And of course that comes into play in real life when, if you're a child, you're playing, right. but also, I mean, anytime we're walking and moving, um, yeah. it takes balance. Yeah. It looks like hippotherapy also helps with strength and mobility. How right. does that work? Well, Sonia is one of our best volunteers, but today she's acting as our client. And for the first time ever, she's going to experience some of the maneuvers we go through to help our riders have more strength. And of course, that in turn leads to them having more mobility and function in life. So, Sonia, I want you to try tall kneeling. All right, this is a maneuver we use for our, our riders who need like more core strength. Um, and better postural control. So she's gonna bring both heels behind and go up on both knees. Good. Good. And then go into that tall kneeling. So bring your arms out if you feel like you're comfortable. Very good. And of course you can feel that core. You can see her muscles working really hard. Very good. You can come down. Now, believe it or not, a lot of our riders will hold that while the horse is moving. Um, so that's something we do for a lot of our, our strength. And what muscles did you, where did you feel that? Where, where was that working? All the way up. <laughs> <laughs> so everything you need for strength and balance. I want you to try one more thing. I want you to try going around the world. Now we have, we usually have a leader and two sidewalkers to help with balance for this. So she's going to bring one leg up and around to me. Good. Scoop back. Face the back of the horse. Very good. It's much scarier to do as an adult <laughs> and then come forward so this works all the muscles that you need to attend to school to sit up and, and keep that endurance and that posture control so if you have a child who's like kind of walks like this or toe walks or just has poor slumpy balance their posture it really affects them when they're trying to do schoolwork or trying to you know uh, engage in a task or a conversation so by doing all this work, you see that her shoulders, hips, and heel are in a straight line. And that's the same, that's exactly what you need when you're walking and when you're standing. And then we see our riders just improve their strength and ability so that when they're doing schoolwork or when they're doing like a vocational test, like sweeping or just playing or engaging with conversation, they're able to maintain that, that muscle, that balance, and that allows them to function no matter what they're doing. So, how that feels, Dawn? Very, oh, strenuous. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard work. It's hard work doing hypotherapy. How can hypotherapy improve someone's focus? Well, hypotherapy improves both focus and communication. So, 
we usually have an obstacle course set up for our riders. So you can see Sonia is, is riding George. Now, a lot of our riders have a leader and one to two sidewalkers to help their balance and to keep them safe. But Sonia is a very balanced, independent rider, so she's on her own. And you can see her coming through the obstacles. She has to tell George with her voice and her body to go right and left. And if you see her, she's gonna like bend down a little bit and like stop riding. And you're gonna see that George takes that and he's gonna hesitate or stop. And he's like, what are you doing? You're not riding me. So in order to be successful and keep this horse walking and going, Sonia has to sit up tall, squeeze her feet, and she's gonna walk right past that camera. Um, so George, she's got to keep her eyes on the prize and keep going. He might try to stop at me. And that's how this really helps improve focus and communication because she's using her eyes and that sustains focus in order to keep this horse moving. Right. And that I'm sure translates into all other areas of life, like in school or doing homework or a job, you're able to focus and attend right. to your task. Right. Really and then with communication, we have a lot of riders who are nonverbal and they either learn to sign, use um, American Sign Language to get the horse to go, in addition to their, you know, the regular body cues as far as using your feet and your right. eyes. Um, or we've used alternative communication devices on the horse. Mm -hmm. And I have had several riders actually verbalize and speak and say go mm -hmm. because they're motivated to get this thousand pound animal right. to do what they want to do. Makes sense. Very yeah. cool. One of the key goals of hippotherapy is communication. And that's because communication is key in horseback riding. You must communicate with the horse to get it to move. So depending on the nature of your child's disability, your child will use their words, their body, and their focus to get the horse to move. In order to get the horse to do what they want, they must communicate either by signing, speaking, using their body to move by squeezing their legs or their feet, or using an augmentative and alternative communication device. The last benefit of hippotherapy we're going to talk about is motivation. Our clients are so motivated to come to their therapy sessions and meet their therapy goals because it's fun and exciting. They are going horseback riding, uh, doing an activity and learning a skill that most typical people don't get to experience. The novelty of working with our gentle giants is exciting for our riders. Some of our riders can't even go to sleep the night before their session because they're just so excited to come to the farm and work with their horse and their team. Now, most riders start out with a whole team, the occupational therapist who makes the goals for the lesson and directs the lesson, two sidewalkers who walk along each side of the horse, and a leader of the horse who's walking the horse, walking in front of the horse. Riders are motivated to reach their therapy goals because if they do, they're able to ride more and more independently. They might lose one sidewalker, then both sidewalkers, then the horse leader. So ultimately, they are riding the horse completely on their own with just the occupational therapist directing the lesson. During sessions, we focus on goals that translate outside of the arena, outside of the farm. For example, during sessions, we focus on completing tasks, following directions, and increasing the overall independence of our riders, skills that will follow them outside of the farm. Can you envision a future where your child looks forward to therapy sessions that they love, where they feel like they're enjoying an activity that not many people can do? Can you envision a future where your child has a community, where they feel like they fit in and belong? Can you envision a future where your child is learning new social skills and mechanisms to cope, resulting in fewer meltdowns? And can you envision a future where your child is improving their balance, building their core strength, and increasing their mobility so they can keep up with their peers and live life to its fullest?
That's what hypotherapy is all about. So how does it work? Just like a typical occupational therapy session in an office, each hypotherapy session is individualized based on your child's strengths and needs. Here at Timberbrook Farm, your loved one is in charge of the whole session. Your child uses their words, their body, their attention, and their focus to get the horse to move. They must be the boss and be in charge. They must focus, they must balance, they must use their lower body and core strength to get the horse to move, and they must communicate by signing, speaking, or using their body to move. A leader and one or two sidewalkers walk with the rider, and as your rider, as your as your child improves in balance and independence, those supports, those team members are taken away. We place no limits on our riders, and we strive for them to become more and more independent riders. Who benefits from hippotherapy? There is no disability too great or too small to be improved through hippotherapy. Hippotherapy can benefit individuals with an array of disabilities, such as anxiety, autism, intellectual disabilities, learning disabilities, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, developmental disabilities, including Down syndrome, and physical disabilities, including multiple sclerosis and cerebral palsy. So let me share with you some of the experiences people have had with our program. A mother of one of our hypotherapy clients writes, my daughter has autism and is visually impaired. And we weren't sure horseback riding was a possibility for her until we met Chelsea. No one has ever connected with my daughter so quickly. The entire team is supportive, patient and compassionate. And the hypotherapy program is really well organized. We still kind of can't believe this place exists and feel so lucky to have found it. Highly recommend it. One of our hypotherapy clients, Nia, is a six-year-old with cerebral palsy. She was completely immobile and dependent on her caregivers to move from one room to another or to get in or out of a car. After just four sessions of hypotherapy, she took her first independent steps in the aisle of our barn after she got off of the horse at the end of her fourth session. It was an emotional experience for everyone involved, and she took 10 steps on her own without anyone holding her up. Her grandmother writes, I could tell Nia was really enjoying herself, which rarely happens in any therapy session. I feel like there is hope now for our Nia to walk on her own someday soon. Nia isn't the only one of our clients to experience a milestone on horseback. Three of our clients with autism have spoken their very first words on horseback. One of the parents of two of our hypotherapy clients with joint hypermobility writes, to get kids out of an office setting and get them into an environment, especially where you can interact with animals, is just lovely. I have seen not only physical growth, but they have definitely improved in their confidence. And we see that in all of our clients, that the benefits of hypotherapy are not just physical, they increase their confidence, they increase their independence, they build social skills, and they just become a part of our community. So here's some questions that parents frequently have about hypotherapy. What happens if my child is too afraid to get on the horse? Uh, well, first of all, we meet your child where they're at. First, we make sure they're comfortable on the ground around the horse before we get closer and before we get on the horse and before we ask the horse to go. Our horses are highly trained to respect a human space, no matter how small the human is. In addition to that, we specifically match each horse with a rider based on the horse's personality, the human's personality, and the rider's needs. 
we can also make a game out of it. Uh, we have had a child play with Legos next to the horse and then on the horse. Um, so engaging the child in something that's fun for them, that's going to make them feel comfortable, just to make a game out of it and make it fun for them to be with the horse until they're more and more comfortable. The other thing we do is we put the rider in control. We don't move forward with any step until the rider is comfortable and confident with where they are. So, for example, it's uh, the rider's decision to get closer and closer to the horse. The rider gets on the horse when they're ready to get on the horse, and the horse will not go until the rider says to. Another question is, what if my child has sensory issues and doesn't like wearing helmets? So obviously, anytime we're riding a horse, uh, for safety reasons, we must always wear a helmet. Um, so, there are a few things we do um, to address this issue. So, first of all, families can practice wearing hats at home. You can make it a fun thing. Everyone in the family can pick out a hat and wear a hat. You can practice wearing hats of different sizes and textures and make it a game to how long you can wear the hat. With your helmet, you can customize the outside of the helmet, um, have them put their name on it, have them put stickers on it, whatever makes it cool and fun for them to wear. And here at the farm, we have different kinds of helmets with different, different textures on the inside and the outside to help meet your child's sensory needs. Will my child be able to ride by themselves? So we put absolutely no limits on our riders. As they improve their balance and focus and are meeting their therapy goals with less and less support from our team, they'll go from using a horse leader and two sidewalkers to one or no sidewalkers and eventually no horse leader. So they are riding completely independently on their own. And our riders don't just walk the horse, they get to trot. And we've had clients even graduate to riding independently, walking and trotting, and even cantering or running the horse. Uh, we also have clients who go through an obstacle course on their own and even jumping. Hi there, Chelsea, can you hear me? I can. Great, hey, I wanna to apologize to everybody for our technical difficulties at the beginning. I was actually having some issues with my uh, computer, so I apologize for that. Um, but I think we got it up and running and the video was lots of fun to watch. And Chelsea, I know you've got some time for a few questions. I sent some questions ahead, but we also have a lot of questions in our Q&A here. So I wanna encourage people okay. who are still here. We've got a couple hundred people um, viewing. If you've got questions you'd like to ask Chelsea, be sure to type them into the Q&A. Um, one question, this is sort of a basic question, but I think uh, just to clarify, is what you do at the farm the same as therapeutic writing? Is hypotherapy the same thing? Would you consider those the same? No, it's, it's completely different. Hippotherapy is carried out by a licensed speech, occupational, or physical therapist. Um, in addition, they are either working with a trained equine team that's certified by the Professional Association of Therapeutic Horsemanship, or like I am directly um, licensed through the Professional Association of Therapeutic Horsemanship. That's also known as PATH. Um, the reason it's different is that hippotherapy is a direct treatment and I'm able to even provide like a receipt to someone's insurance company um, using billing codes just as I would if your child came into a clinic. Um, the difference is I'm using a moving motivational surface, the horse, to help your child be more engaged and successful during the treatment options instead of trying to get them to go through obstacles or otherwise involved. Therapeutic riding is recreational, so that's not covered by any kind of 
insurance in any way because it's it's more like your le- your child learning to ride. Um, and there's still some benefits to that, of course, but it, it's not done by a trained um, therapist. It is, but they do get certifications through PATH as well to be a therapeutic ride instructor, but it's to ride the horse as independently as possible versus an individualized occupational therapy session, physical therapy session, or speech se- se- session on the horse. Excellent. Well, thanks for clarifying that. Um, so the next question that we have is about proprioceptive and, and the benefits. And you described a lot of that in the video. From an occupational therapist perspective, um, obviously this is highly beneficial. Can you talk a little bit about why, obviously it's got to do with the muscle stimulation, but vestibular issues or other issues that kids experience and uh, how... Um, Frequently, is there ever a case where you just don't see that kind of progress? Sure. So the reason the horse works so well is not only are they a motivational tool, but they move. In 30 minutes, you have to weight shift 30,000 times. And so a lot of times in this parking lot, we see individuals and children and adults with autism come down the lane and they're staying and they just don't know where their body is in space. As soon as they get on the horse, and this this has happened across the board, we see a change in that where the stimulant lessens or completely goes away, and that individual is able to focus on following directions. Um, and sometimes it's their learning goals that are related to school. Sometimes it's vocational, like pre-vocational goals that we're working with on the horse. But the movement of the horse uh, pacifies that sensory need and allows them really to focus and participate more fully in the session, which allows the occupational therapy session to be much more effective. Um, And sometimes if we have students who are very excited, we can ask them to stand up on the horse, go around the world, um, or we can have the horse vary their gates and go faster, providing more input. And we specifically partner the horse to the individual. So if I have someone who is not sensory seeking and really seeking but more averse to it, we have horses that are much more slower, gentler, wider versus horses that are going to move out faster and rotate the pelvis as they move and really facilitate that sensory seeking need. Okay. Um, How do therapists get training to be hippotherapists? So if you're an OT and you're interested in it, how would you get started? So there's two certifications. One's the American Hippotherapy Association that is specific to therapists. And the other one is the Professional Association of Therapeutic Horsemanship, also known as PATH. And PATH is a little bit more expansive. It covers people who just wanna be therapeutic ride instructors and don't have that extra degree um, in addition to therapists. And then there's also EGALA, which is um, like psychotherapy, So that's through a gala and path if you're like a psychotherapist. Okay, great. So what about research on hippotherapy? Is there printed research, peer-reviewed studies that have been done about it, or is a lot of it anecdotal now? There are peer-reviewed studies. That's something that could always be um, stronger in our field. But one study it really sticks out to me, and I can I can get the link for you guys in the future, but they tried to put children on a robotic horse and mimic the same kind of motivational tools that they've received and physical um, you know, aspects that they've received with hippotherapy on a robot because, of course, there's no, you know, a robot's not going to do anything unnatural. Um, but they did not have the same, the same results because a big piece that the research has shown is that it's the motivating aspect of working with the horse and getting this 1,000 pound animal to go and stop and move where you want to go, which allows that cause and effect and increases the focus. Okay, so you in the video talked about coming to visit you there in Maryland. Obviously, a lot of the people who are on the on the webinar today are all over, not necessarily near yeah. Maryland. So if people are looking for hippotherapists who are qualified in your area, how do you, where would you send them? So 
one aspect is going to a local horse farm and seeing, you know, who, do they know anyone who specializes in working with people with a disability? Um, I would go that route first. I know Maryland has a statewide horse discovery center. Um, obviously that's not gonna be for every single state. Um, in addition, the American Hippotherapy Association and the Professional Association of Therapeutic Horsemanship has search engines for licensed professionals. Um, and I, I would recommend that the therapist is not only current on their license to treat and provide that treatment, but is either working with a PATH certified equine team or is a dual certified therapist. Okay, um, people are asking a lot of insurance questions. <laughs> so I don't know, you probably can't share specific billing codes, but they're wondering about if you have an OT present and then also a horse, you know, somebody who's handling the horse, are both of those people reimbursed by insurance or is this something you work out sort of as a business? I mean, obviously it's uh, it's yeah, an hypotherapy. Yeah, only only the occupational therapy. It would have to be a business model. Um, usually, with through hippo hippotherapy, I provide a receipt, and that reimbursement actually goes to the family, um, and then they reimburse us for our services. Now, everyone does it a different way. I could also have relationships with the insurance companies and go directly through insurance, but that's a little bit more work on my end, and because we have this whole farm. I, I can't do that closely, but yeah, you would have to figure that out with a barn um, and kind of preset those details. Right, right. So just depending on whoever you're working with locally, you'd need to find out how they're doing it. And I know, I mean, I live in a far away state from Maryland and everything works differently in every state. So being sure to- Yeah, all insurance different too. Yeah, yep. Yeah. So checking with your insurance, checking with your provider, and then trying to trying to communicate across both. So another question that we got, my child is afraid of all animals. Every single, you know, especially dogs, but I'm worried about taking her to a horse farm. I think it would be a fiasco. So you talked about this a little bit in the video, but have you got any examples of a yeah. specific child who maybe was very afraid of animals and and how that went when when they were brought to the farm? I do. So um, from the video, you saw that, that I am an animal trainer. That's kind of what the Lord led me to, to get, to get into this field. And I have trained specifically service dogs. And I had one individual come to me. He was seven years old, terrified of all dogs. And I worked with him specifically with, with the trained dog, first at a distance. And then I, the whole point was to get this individual to feel comfortable around the dog, comfortable around the horse by feeling in control. So with this individual, I had them train the dog and like understand that this dog will sit, lay down, come and back up on their, on their um, verbalization by their command. And eventually we got him to the point where all he wants now for Christmas and his birthday is a dog called a pug. Um, he also started doing hippotherapy and we started the same way. We started on the ground with the horse at a distance that's comfortable for him and all these horses are specially trained to move backwards, forwards, left and right. And once that child felt that this horse was not gonna do anything crazy, they were in control, um, it really helped. And in addition, we have a ramp to, and it's used more for children who are fearful than our physical disabled individuals because it puts them much higher than the horse and the horse is down low and the horses stand very still and they're much less reactive than a dog. They don't make a lot of noise. Um, so if that individual like matches her daughter with a horse that's patient and calm and not, not going to make a lot of noise, that should help facilitate that relationship. And what happened with us is we started with the dog and it flowered into no, to riding the horses, but it could go the opposite way where they have a positive experience with the horse and maybe not all dogs are scary. Let's work with a dog that's not very active and calm and have positive experiences all the way around. Okay, this next question is about age limitations. So is there an age that's too young? Um, would a two-year-old be too young for hippotherapy if they're diagnosed and they're receiving occupational therapy and the family is interested? Right, so PATH says two years and up, two, two years of age and up. So the only thing is we have to have, like we have a really special toddler 
helmet that's like certified in our field that's going to fit that person safely. Okay. Um, a lot of people are posting in the Q&A and chat some of these links that you've been talking about. So if people are looking for that information, be sure to check out the um, chat and Q&A. Uh, the next question is about the horses themselves. So about the, is this a humane activity for them? How do they respond to students who have significant sensory challenges or who may have some um, uh, stereotypy or different behaviors that might be loud or, or disruptive? So absolutely. So we have to be very careful with the horses, the type of horses that we choose. All of our horses here were actually rescued. We have one horse that was Amish, two horses that were um, in a feedlot, and we were rescuing them for this. Um, and then we have a couple horses that were just at a ranch, at a camp. They had, they couldn't keep up to the camp life and they retired and, and worked with us instead of um, going to an auction and having an unknown fate. Um, I put a lot of effort into finding and training the horses here. We actually just launched a program for individuals who serve in the military and they're going to start helping us with the training of the horses. Um, there's two things we look for in horses and that that is that they're not very reactive and that they are rather short and stocky so that if I'm helping someone who has poor balance, I'm not very tall. So that horse needs to be, horses are measured in hands. That horse needs to be um, about 14 hands to 15 hands because I can't safely um, support someone who's way above my head. Um, and then daily, these I handle this as daily, um, and like I have two baby horses in training in order to take on the role as the older horses get too old for this. Um, we also have different horses. No, no horse works more than an hour at a time. Um, this, the professional standard is no more than six hours a day, but none of our horses work more than three hours a day. Um, and it, there is a lot of time consumed in training and finding that right special horse, teaching them patience. And we do something called desensitization where you help a horse be brave. So you like take a feed bag and usually a horse would be terrified of a feed bag. And I teach them that I'm gonna move this feed bag until you face it and you relax. And we play this game a lot. I mean, I have a six month old colt we're working with right now. And you just teach them to be brave. And then we transition that on the backs of the horse, you know, so we, we make noises and they say that a loud rider, a loud horse owner has quiet horses, meaning that they just get used to it. They're like, what are you doing? And now with that said, there are some horses that would completely be unsuitable for this. They have to be all of my horses that we use. I can personally go around the world, do, do a plank on them. Um, and they have that body type and the personality that they, they certainly don't mind it. And they would much rather be working with us and walking with a bunch of little kids and adults loving on them than trying to work hard and jumping and doing some kind of more cardiovascular workout. All right. And so when they retire, did they just stay there on the farm with you? Yes. <laughs> so they have a happy, happy uh, retirement there, I'm sure. Okay, so another question is about sort of a phenotype. So parents are asking, like, if my child likes to rock, if that's one of the stereotypies that my child engages in or um, does oral or vocalizations, is would that suggest that they're a really good therapist? or hypotherapy candidate? Do you see any correlation between yeah. different, um, between different sort of typical beha stereotypical behaviors and receptivity and benefit? Absolutely. So the movement of the horse is key. Now for someone with autism, it's to fulfill that sensory need, help them relax and focus. Now with autism, there's different spectrums. You have the individuals who are rocking and seeking that, that um, sensory experience. And then you have also individuals who are tactile, defensive, gravitational insecurity. They don't want to touch stuff. They don't want to be up high. And this would certainly help both spectrums. With the individual who is really looking for that input, it gives them that input, teaches them to focus while helping them gain strength. And then on the flip side, if I have someone who doesn't want to touch anything or be involved, the horse, working with the horse motivates them to um, work step-by-step step to be used to being up high. And then that gives them self-confidence to try new things that relate to generally life skills. Okay, great. 
All right. Well, Chelsea, thank you so much for this presentation today and for taking the time to answer all these questions. We really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for having me. And, and so, if, if anyone has any other questions, free to email us. One last thing. You provided a couple of handouts. So if you could tell the group really quickly about uh, the handouts, we'll be posting those on our website with the playback. So you should be able to get to those um, shortly. But uh, yeah, just fill them in on those two handouts that you provided. So when COVID hit, we realized that we wanted to provide individuals who are not local to Maryland or who are stuck at home ways that they can work with their child, whether their child is young or transitioning into adulthood, um, some activities that they can work on their goals for hippotherapy at home. So you'll see the barn abilities and everything but the horse. I had students from Towson University, they're occupational therapy students. They developed those for us and they're all related to the goals of balance, communication, focus, and strength. So they they're all have something to do with animals and the horses, um, but it's something that you can do at home to help your child succeed. See you next time, Chelsea.